Hello everyone, welcome back to another enrichment build. This time we're going to be making a wobbling feeder, uh, designed primarily for primates, but uh, you can also adapt it for use to things like procyanids and uh, anything that your imagination really takes to you. We're going to be making two at once, we're going to be making a slightly smaller one for Callies and then a slightly larger one for um, small, uh, still relatively small primates, but um, on a slightly larger scale. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mark out a pair of circles on this plywood. There are two ways that you can do it that I use normally with smaller, uh, with smaller ones like uh, we're going to be doing today. You can use a compass and just mark it out, same as you would on a piece of paper. On slightly larger ones, if you get yourself a steel rule like this and you find the central point, you draw a screw in through the little ring there and then you just keep your uh, keep your pencil on a mark as it goes round, you will get a perfect circle every time. I'm going to cut this for a minute because it's raining again. Okay, apologies for that. Um, it started raining and uh, I've only got one camera and didn't want to get it wet, so we had to stop filming for a second there. But uh, while it was raining, I have measured out the two uh, circles that we're going to cut out for our feeders. Um, one of them is divided into three because we're only going to have three capsules for uh, food on and the other one is divided into four because we're going to have four. The main thing to remember is that you keep uh, a note of where your central point is because we're going to use that as a point of balance and otherwise everything will sit off and also make sure that whatever, however you divide it into like a piece of pie into five, into three, into four, whatever, uh, that they are all equidistant from each other. So there's a 60 degree uh, angle between all the lines for the three, 90 degree for the four, etc., etc. Not 60 for the uh, three, I meant 120, I think. I'm not a mathematician. Make sure that it's equal, in other words. Because, again, if everything is not balanced and level, the board itself will not sit balanced and level. So we're going to cut out the circles now. I am going to use a jigsaw, which if you're going to be making funny shapes, um, curves and things like that, I would highly recommend investing in. There are other options to cutting, cutting curves on um, bits of board. Uh, you can use things like a coping saw, which Ta -da! This is a coping saw, you use it much like a jigsaw, um, however it takes forever to use and it will not work very well on thicker board like this. The other option if you've got access to a workshop is a bandsaw, which is a big old bench tool, but I don't have access to a workshop as can be evidenced by the fact that I'm operating out of my front garden. So. Uh, we're just going to use a jigsaw. I'd highly recommend investing in one. They're not super expensive. They can get super expensive, but um, you can pick up a jigsaw for 30, 40 quid. Um, it's not going to be top of the line, but it's going to be enough to, for you to hash out some circles and some curves and things like that. And then if you find that you're getting a lot of use out of it, you can always upgrade to a bigger one. Or if you're working in a zoo or something and you're in luck, your workshop might already have a jigsaw for you to have a play with. Get a feel for it. It is a very different tool to a lot of uh, a lot of tools you might have come across beforehand, but um, they're good fun once you get your get your head round it. So I'm going to put that coping saw out of the way, and uh, and we'll get started. We need to clamp down the workpiece and also put on our PPE. Um, if you're working from home, you wear whatever PPE you feel comfortable wearing. However, I would be remiss if I didn't advise everyone to put on ear defenders or earplugs and at least safety glasses. Regular glasses do not cut it, I'm afraid. They will not stop a uh, really great shard of wood coming up and stabbing you in the eye. So uh, safety glasses, safety rated, um, will be the way to go for that. So I will get this clamped down and we'll get started. Uno. 
one day I'll have a beautiful workshop and it will have dust extraction and a proper workbench and I won't have to stop when it starts raining. But that is our second board done. I uh, noticed midway through the second board that I had my jigsaw on a much higher uh, speed than I normally do for cutting plywood. If you have it on a higher speed, it means that the work goes through faster, but it also means that you run the risk of tear out. I don't know if you can see it there, but I've got a little bit of tear out on the wood. Um, this is going to be the underside, so it's not a massive deal, but um, it's still something that's going to bug me, and, it, and I'd rather it didn't happen, if that makes sense. But they're done. Uh, this one, only after I cut it out did I realise that it had the sticky label on what will be the top side. So I am going to transfer the lines onto the other side before I do much else, just so that the um, sticky label is not going to be showing and uh, looking all unsightly when it's being used. Okay, the uh, rain has gone and we are back. So the next step is going to be, we're going to be drilling a hole for our eye bolt to go through the middle. We're going to be using M6 eye bolts. What that means in layman's terms, when I can find an eye bolt, is that the exterior of the thread on the eye bolt is six millimeters. So we could, could drill a six mil hole and then uh, kind of wiggle it and twizzle it and maybe hammer it down and get it through. But really, because we're going to be using washers as well, we'll just use an eight mil drill bit to uh, cut the hole and that way it will slide in nice and gently and we can still tighten it up and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. So that's what we're going to do now. Because we don't want uh, any blowout, so we don't want any chips of wood coming off the other side, we're going to be drilling over a backing piece. And what that means is it just means that there's going to be uh, a second piece of wood that's going to take the end of the drill as it comes out the first piece of wood and uh, stops it blowing out basically. It holds it all together much nicer. So if you're trying to make a very neat hole and you don't want any blowout, use a backing piece. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a lip and spur bit, also just known as a general wood bit, just because uh, they tend to cut better through wood, surprisingly enough, that is their purpose. That was how I put it in forward. Okay. And there we have it, a lovely neat hole going through and you can see we just started drilling into the backing piece there. The backing piece was just a little bit of wood left over from the uh, jigsaw action. So we we'll should probably see whether the bolt fits through it. like a glove. So that is perfect, that is exactly what we want to see. And uh, we'll just quickly do that to the other one as well. And then we will get along with starting to cut the holes for our feeders. I'll cut that. It's okay, it's fine. It's fine, it's a little bit green from the grass, but uh, adds character. They're gonna get manked up by animals anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay, as it seems to have stopped actively raining for the moment, we'll, uh, we'll carry on. The next stage is gonna be drilling the holes for the animals to stick their wee mitts through on our pot lids. Well, so on these ones, which is for the larger feeder, the pot lid is flat and as a result we can screw we can drill the holes through that and screw the lids onto the wood. And that way, when it comes to cleaning, we can just take the actual pots themselves out, wash them in a sink or whatever. It makes things much much easier. Unfortunately, these ones they have this weird lip so if we were to screw the lids on with these, one, we wouldn't be able to put the clips back on, and also there would be a gap 
which is just asking for food to get trapped in, water, all sorts of grossness. So we don't want that. So what we'll do is we will instead screw the actual boxes themselves onto the base of this one. So we are gonna pick ourselves out the correct hole saws and we'll get cutting. So let's take away the things that we don't need. And it started raining again. Okay, so the uh, weather seems to have stabilised for a little bit. So we're going to try and get on and carry on a little bit more with these feeders. So the next step is, as I said, we're going to cut holes in the uh, boxes so that the animals can stick their hands in all their tongues or whatever you can use this design for things like anteaters as well if you wanted so we're going to be using hole saws now hole saws are really good for cutting holes in thin material you don't want to try and cut stuff uh, in really big material because it doesn't actually remove a huge amount of material it just like the name says saws a hole around the shape that you want to cut so we're going to have to work out, firstly, the right size for this. So these are going to be much smaller animals. So I think that this one, which is the 32mm, will be perfect for the actual pop for the small ones. When you're cutting them out, because you're going to have to cut into the wood as well, uh, I would always use a, a slightly larger one for the actual plastic pop, and then a slightly smaller one for the wood itself. And the reason for that is that uh, when the animal is sticking their hands in there's no chance of them getting uh, themselves cut on any of the uh, sharp, potential sharp edges from plastic. Uh, obviously you'll do your best to take away the sharp edges regardless but there's always a chance it'll slip through the cracks so if the hole in the wood is smaller then there's no risk of that anyway. So if we're going to use 32mm for that we're going to need to use the 25mm for the wood itself. And for the slightly larger one, we can obviously make a, a bigger one. So that one, we could even use that one. That's a little bit too big. So we will use the 51 mil for that. And then the 38 mil will be the interior. And as you'll be able to tell, it'll be, it needs to be big enough that the animal can obviously stick its hand through um, well, just, it can't be too big, but you want it to be big enough that the animal can at least fit its hands in. So, we will find a little piece of backing board and we'll get started on the small ones. Okay, so this little bit of wood here, which is just an offcut, is going to be our backing plate. We've, we've fitted on our lovely hole saw and we're just going to start cutting. So you want to make sure that you're dead centre in there. Have the pilot hole go through first. And that's that. Nice and simple. We'll clean them all up. And I don't know if you can see very well, but we have a little cutout that we've cut with that hole. It doesn't really much matter if you take it out each time, but obviously when you're cutting wood, you're going to need to make sure that they get removed every time you go through. Okay, so that is them cut out for the small one. We're going to take off that hole saw and swap it out for the next one. you will want to clamp down your workpiece when you're using a hole saw because there is a strong possibility for it to snap back and hit you. Unfortunately these are a little bit, these are a little bit small for me to do that but certainly when I'm cutting the wood I will be clamping it down to the workstation. And there we have it. 
all our plastic pots and our plastic lids that we need have had holes cut in. So those are the four for the small one and the big one. We've cut it out of the lids, obviously. You want to take care when you're doing it to tr make sure that you don't split the plastic, so don't go too aggressively. Unfortunately, as you can see with this one, it jumped a little bit, and uh, I did get some scratches on the top, but uh, it shouldn't matter tremendously in the long run. And we're gonna get ourselves a little hand file, and we're just gonna file those a little bit smoother. Okay, so I've cleared the worst of the excess plastic off of these. There's still a little bit more, but because we're gonna be making smaller holes in the wood, that shouldn't actually make a huge amount of difference. The next point is to work out where we're gonna cut our holes on the wood itself. So ideally, we wanna try and make it about halfway down uh, along the radius, would be the, the term to use. So if this one, if I just move the drill out of the way, this one, the radius is 150 mil. So if we want to make a little mark at 75 mil along each of the things, then we'll know where we want to drill our holes. And we're going to clamp these because obviously as you saw you don't want this spinning around and clip and um, clipping you because it will hurt I have been had my hands cut open by it before so we are going to clamp it down and then what we're going to do is we're going to drill with the hole saw I've changed the hole saw on this well actually this is the wrong one I'll change the hole saw again on this um, but we're only going to drill as far as pilot bit that is a small bit in the center will go through the other side and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're going to drill again from the other direction and that is again to prevent tear out so that we get a nice even uh, edged hole on either side and we don't have any risk of tear out whatsoever so um, yeah let's give it a crack shall we The thing to remember when you're cutting hole saw, holes with hole saws is that you need to stop frequently to clear out both the area that you're cutting and also the teeth on the blade. Because if you don't do uh, either of them, you will wind up with it all clogging and uh, getting stuck and heating up and you'll wind up with a overheated blade which will never cut as well again and you'll also wind up with a, um, a hole that's just not going any deeper because everything is so compacted and the teeth are compacted so there's no actual cutting edge uh, available to them and you just won't have a very efficient cutting edge so always make sure that you keep clearing it out as you're going through okay so we've started cutting on this side and we've made it so that the pilot holes are now coming through the other side. So we're going to flip it over and we're going to cut back down those same holes on the other side. And what this will do is it will ensure that we're getting the exact same hole, but it's going to be, uh, lost my words for a second there. So it's the exact same hole, but we're not going to have any tear out like we would if we just tried to smash the hole saw straight through it.
Okay, now as you can see, we've got the holes all cut out, ready for us to put it all together. And uh, very, very minimal tear out. If you're really bugged by it, you can just run a rounded file through these. Again, just to even them up a little bit. I might do a little bit later, I might not. Um, but we'll just carry on as is and we'll do the other one. Okay, that's all the hole sawing done, which is what um, a lot of people seem to find the most intimidating step. Um, and to be brutally honest, with all the ones that I've made, it is the one that the step that I've hurt myself on the most. So take care. Don't try and start the saw going when the actual teeth are on the uh, wood because it will catch and it will whip round and it will smack you. So be careful, take care, and uh, that section's done now. We can move on to uh, finishing touches, put it all together. So we've cut all our pieces to the right size, we've cut the holes in our board, now we've got to uh, put it all together. So uh, all we're going to do is we're going to find the piece which has the line still on it because this is going to be the bottom for us and we're going to line up these pieces so that they are in the middle of the hole and also so that they are all angled towards the centre. And then we're going to take our pilot hole, pilot drill bit and we're going to drill a little hole in each corner making sure that obviously that it is a big enough hole that we can fit our screw into and the head isn't going to uh, be hitting against anything. I would suggest you use these um, flat topped screws, I don't really know the exact name for them. What do they say on the box? On the box it just has a picture of it being a flat head. Basically you don't want to use countersunk screws because um, when a screw countersinks it then means that uh, there's less material of the plastic left to hold it in place and you want to try and keep that plastic as intact as possible to ensure that um, to ensure that it doesn't pull through and especially when you're dealing with rather aggy animals like monkeys can be you want to try and make it as strong as possible so we've done our pilot holes and then we just tension it in like that nice and easy you don't want to go too hard because you what you can what can happen otherwise is you either crack the plastic or you just power the screw all the way through the plastic and then you're left with a useless lid that you can't use at home that you can't use at work and uh, yeah i'd be very annoyed with myself if that happened and i'm sure any of you would be as well So, our lids are all screwed on now, and uh, we might as well check that the pots actually fit on properly. Excellent. Fan dabby dozy. I'll just pop them onto the next, onto the little one as well, and uh, then we'll put on the, the bolt, and we are just about good to go. And there we have it. They are functionally done. Uh, you probably noticed that I was using an impact driver and a drill when I was putting them in. Do you need an imp both of them to uh, get the job done? Absolutely not. I just did it because it was faster for me, and I had both anyway. So um, use what tools you've got but don't stress about not having uh, a, like a massive multi multitude of tools. This just saved me changing out bits every time from uh, drilling the pilot holes. So um, use what you've got and you will find a way. So now all that we've got left to do is we're just gonna get those eye bolts that I showed you earlier and we're gonna put them through. We're gonna lock them up with some nylock bolts and some washers and then 
we're just going to I'm just going to splice some rope and a carabiner onto uh, onto the end of them. I I like to splice it because I like splicing. It's one of the few things I'm good at. So um, I always try and do it when I can, and also it's a very neat and efficient way to make a line like that. But uh, you can attach it with anything that you want. If you want to use chain, if you want to just tie a knot and uh, hang it like that, do what works for you. Always remember to, whenever you can, use washers on your bolts. That just gives it greater surface area and means that uh, it has a lot more material that it needs to break before it'll pull out. What I'm going to do is just use this spanner to hold the nut steady and we're going to rotate it like this. And if you've got a spanner in an awkward position but you've got an eyelet in a uh, pretty cushy position on the other side, use the eyelet to do the turning. That nut ain't going nowhere. Boom. And that is the basics of it done. All you do is you attach whatever kind of line to it whether you want to splice a line on or whether you just want to tie something on temporarily, either works. And we'll just give it a little test. And it seems to be sitting pretty well. So I'll quickly do the other one and uh, then we'll be just about done. That's about it. As you can see, I've spliced on lines to both of these. Obviously slightly different sizes because we're aiming for slightly different animals with them. That doesn't normally happen. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it interesting and I hope it encourages you to uh, have a crack at it and um, give it a go and s just see what you come up with. Um, thank you very much and I'll pop out another one of these as soon as I can. <laughs>